1 John chapter 5 Things the children of God can know. Number one, faith brings victory and life. Number two, he that loveth God loveth his children and keepeth his commandments. Number three, keeping his commandments are to the faithful light and not grievous. Number four, Jesus is the Son of God and he is able to save us. Number five, Jesus hears our prayers, which we make for ourselves and for others. First John chapter five, verse one. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat him also, that is, begotten of him. What is John saying in this verse? Isn't he telling us how one is born of God? Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ? What does this mean? Don't you think he's saying that you must believe that Jesus is your Messiah, not just the Messiah? Read verses 2 and 3. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. By this we know that we love the children of God. Just as much as our love for the people of God reflects our love for God, so our love and obedience to God is a demonstration of love to the body of Christ. An example. It is sometimes said that the best thing a father can do for his children is to love his wife, their mother. Even so, the first way for a child of God to love his brothers and sisters in Christ is to love God and obey Him. And if you love the parent, you will love the child. Do you get the picture? For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. What did Jesus say in John chapter 14, verse 15? If you love me, keep my commandments. Simply, love for God will show itself in obedience. His commandments are not grievous, not burdensome. When we see how wise and good the commandments of God are, we realize they are gifts from Him to show us the best and most fulfilling life possible. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. How? Could you explain this verse? In this chapter, John is about to give further reason why the requirements of God are not a wearying and exhausting load. To the unaided human soul, they are impossible to fulfill. But to the born-again Christian, all things 
are possible. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. A Christian partakes of the divine nature and draws on the same resources that sustained Christ in his earthly life. Desire of Ages, page 123. When assailed by temptation, look not to circumstances or to the weaknesses of self, but to the power of the word. All its strength is yours. Thy word, says the psalmist, have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. By the word of thy lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Psalm 119, verse 11, Psalm 17, verse 4. First John, chapter 5, verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Who is John referring to when he says, born of God. Every Christian who has accepted Jesus Christ and has not returned to the ways of the world and thus not denied the Lord who redeemed him. 1 John chapter 5 verses 6 through 8 This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Who and what is John referring to in these verses? Jesus and he is speaking in reference to the historical fact of the Incarnation. Jesus came by water, that is by his baptism, and by his blood, that is by his crucifixion. These are two events that were landmarks in his sacrificial ministry and identify him as the redeeming Son of God. What about verses 7 and 8? For there are three that bear a record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Hebrew practice, based on Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 6, and chapter 19, verse 15, demanded consistent testimony from two or three witnesses. So, John is here citing these witnesses in support of the divinity of Jesus, thus assuring his readers of the reliability of his statement. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9 If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. There were, at that time, those who would rather believe men than God. So, John is stating truth, 
for the witness of God is greater than that of men. 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Why do you think that John is making this very strong statement? He is once again emphasizing the importance of continually believing Christ to be the Son of God in order to claim or validate this promise. 1 John chapter 5 verses 11 and 12 And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Any thoughts? To live for self is to perish. Covetousness, the desire of benefit for self's sake, cuts the soul off from life. It is the spirit of Satan to get, to draw to self. It is the spirit of Christ to give, to sacrifice self for the good of others. Christ's Object Lesson, page 259. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Here it is, the specific purpose for which John wrote the preceding section of his letter. But it may also be applied to the entire epistle. 1 John chapter 5 verse 14 And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. What is John introducing in this verse? In this verse, John's thoughts concerning the possession of eternal life and belief on the Son of God suggests to him the confidence that the believer may have in approaching the Son. And thus, the subject of prayer is introduced. 1 John chapter 5 verses 15 and 16. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother's sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. What is the essential element of prevailing prayer? Faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
1 John chapter 5, verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. All unrighteousness is sin? So, how do we describe what sin is? 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. John is the only New Testament author to speak of our being begotten or born of the Father. In saying this, he includes every Christian who has not returned to the world and thus denied the Lord who redeemed him. 1 John chapter 5 verse 19 And we know that we are of God. How can we know that we are born of God. 1 John chapter 5 verse 1 Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. John chapter 3 verse 5 Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 20 And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. 1 John chapter 5, verse 21 Little children, Keep yourselves from idols. Amen. What is an idol? Anyone or anything that would prevent the believer from worshiping the true God. Things the children of God can know. Number one that we love the children of God when we love God. Number two, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Number three, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Number four, that he hears us Number five, that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Number six, that we are of God. Number seven, that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding. Number eight, that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. Number nine, that this is the true God and eternal life. 
My thoughts and comments are taken mainly from the SDA Bible Commentary, the Remnant Study Bible, Christ's Object Lessons, the Desire of Ages. All scripture quoted is from the King James Bible. The end and God bless you.